Oh, hey guys. You ever been watching one of those old cowboy western shows and there's a big shootout scene and every time they fire their guns the bullets make those crazy sounds like screams and whistles and all those buzzing noises? Do bullets really make those noises when they travel through the air? Most of the time, no. This is Hollywood. But every now and then, believe it or not, they do. Now, I don't have access to an outdoor shooting range where I can conduct this experiment safely, but we can replicate the exact same thing with a slingshot and some rocks. So let's go outside, find a parking lot, and I'm going to show you how this awesome phenomenon works. She wants to finish this episode first. And it's raining outside. And it's nighttime. Guess we'll have to wait for tomorrow. Whenever the bullet exits the barrel of a gun, it's spinning extremely quickly. This is due to the spiraled indentations inside the barrel called rifling. This spin is vital for the bullet to remain straight and level, nose pointed forward, so that the air flows over the smooth edges of the bullet instead of the rough ends towards the rear. The spinning force that allows these bullets to remain in forward flight is called gyroscopic force. It's the same force that allows you to balance more easily on a bicycle when the wheels are spinning. As long as the bullet remains pointing forward, the air is allowed to flow smoothly over the edges in the nose of the bullet, as it's designed to do. And the only thing you really hear when the bullet passes you is a whooshing sound. Of course, with the exception of a loud crack, a sonic boom, if the bullet is traveling past the speed of sound. In that case, we would see a shockwave forming at the tip of the bullet. The reason that bullets will sometimes make these crazy screaming noises, zipping noises, and buzzing noises in Hollywood films and in real life is because that bullet impacted the side of a hard object, like a wall, the ground, a mountain, a cliff. The forward orientation of that bullet is broken up, it crumples the bullet, and the bullet is sent tumbling end over end, exposing all of those new, sharp, rough edges to the relative wind causing vibrations and turbulence. And that is the sound that we're going to hear today replicated with these rocks. So here we are today in the parking lot of my old high school. I graduated here 10 years ago and it's funny to think that if I walked in those doors, nobody would know me. It's funny how life is. To replicate a bullet bouncing off of the ground, I'm going to take this slingshot, put the rock inside, and fire that rock at the pavement. And those rocks are gonna be spinning like mad as they fly past the microphone. That was actually pretty close. <laughs> And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why the plexiglass is there. Now the buzzing noises that these rocks make as they fly through the air is unique to its shape, and no rock is the same. The faster the rocks spin, the higher pitch that noise will be. Now that we know what's going on and why it's happening, I want to take this a step further. You guys know me. It's not enough for me to know why it's happening. I want to actually see it. I want to see those disturbances. I want to see that turbulence behind this rock. So let's go downstairs, set up a few things, and see if we can make this happen. What do you do on a Saturday night? I'm using a camera setup known as Schlieren for this experiment. A single light source is pointed directly at a concave mirror, and after the light bounces off that mirror, it condenses down to the focal point where a razor blade is used to split the light waves in half, allowing us to see shadows of where those air densities are. Lastly, the lens of the camera is positioned directly behind the beam of light, and these are the results. Here's some hot air rising from a candle. I'll be using an Olympus iSpeed 3 high-speed camera set to 12,000 frames per second today. Ready to go. Got a rock in here right now. Three, two, one. Well, there's our little rock in all its glory, sailing in front of the mirror at 12,000 frames per second. 
and the visible turbulence on the screen is, well, disappointing. I just need to launch these rocks harder. Slingshot armed. Mm-hmm. Three, two, one. Let's see if we got that one. I hope so. Just to be clear, the idea is to fire the rock from the slingshot at the cinder block so it achieves as much spin as possible while passing in front of our mirror, just like we did out in the parking lot. Woo! I love airflow over rough edges! Yes! The simple pleasures of life. Dear Diary, I've just observed a madman exhibiting his madness. The world is a very frightening. The Schlieren setup allows us to literally see sound waves. Because all that sound waves are, are different pressure densities in the atmosphere. My poor neighbor. <laughs> Anything traveling through the air creates these areas of high and low pressure. And depending on how extreme those differences in pressure are can determine how loud that sound is that's produced. For example, the subsonic BB fired from an air rifle. Not very loud. This whip cracking, which is much louder. And finally, this firecracker exploding. Really loud. Now we're starting to get somewhere. But I think this was just a lucky take, because more often than not, this is what was happening to my rocks. That exploded into a million pieces. I don't know if it was just a bad batch of rocks that I picked up that day, or the close proximity that I was firing them at the cinder block, so I figured this rubber would help dampen the blow and maybe even provide some more friction so they spun faster. In this shot, you can see a decent amount of turbulence behind the main rock, but what's impressive to me is that little tiny piece behind it that broke off. It's not even traveling as fast as the main piece, but it must be spinning like crazy, because look at that focused little stream of turbulence behind it. The rocks just kept blowing up, so I took these pieces of lead and wadded them up into little mushroom-shaped pieces that more closely represented a bullet anyway, because it's lead. Do you remember when we were watching The Lone Ranger? Did you think it would come to this? Okay, safety glasses on. Oh, a little bit better, I guess. It was at this time that an otherworldly worm-like creature emerged from the dust. What was it? Did we just discover a new alien life form? Were we about to be famous? <sighs> Tipper, you clever bird. A cat hair? In the midst of the confusion and rush of adrenaline, I took the slingshot and fired a rock full force in front of the mirror without bouncing it off of anything. And it provided arguably one of the best illustrations of turbulence in this whole video yet. She knew it all along. Thank you, Tipper, for saving this video and my YouTube reputation. It was after these last few attempts that I realized that this was as good as it was going to get. In all honesty though, as loud as those rocks were in the parking lot, I seriously thought we were going to see a lot more turbulence. But as they oftentimes say, in the deepest corners of a quiet library, we need more power, more force, more speed, and that's what it's going to take. We'll revisit this one in the future, guys, with different methods and alternative approaches. But until then, put those cowboy hats on and keep playing with those slingshots. I'll see you next time.